So folks, as you can see, here we are with the inner workings of Triumph's TE1 prototype sat here. And I've been joined by Dear Ardash from Williams Advanced Engineering. And we're just going to talk a little bit about the uh, TE1 and the role that Williams are playing in this project. Um, thank you very much for joining us, Dear. Um, just before we go through the oily bits, well, I want to say oily bits, but there probably aren't many oily bits in there of the bike. Could you just tell us a little bit about Williams Advanced Engineering and also the role that they're going to be playing in the TE1 project? Sure. So uh, Williams Advanced Engineering is the advanced engineering arm of the Williams Formula One team. Mm -hmm. um, we were born out of the uh, Formula One team um, uh, around 2010, um, when the Formula One team actually started uh, looking at uh, the KERS systems in Formula One. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've had quite a long journey of uh, experience of electrification uh, within motorsport, within automotive uh, applications and also uh, some uh, um, sort of non-automotive non applications as well. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, our sort of uh, role within the within the project actually and it's been a great sort of collaborative uh, partnership between the, uh, the the four partners um, is to do with the design and development of the battery system that you see before us here mm. uh, and also um, essentially an integrated battery management system and motorcycle ECU so it's a it's a, an ECU that controls not only the battery and, uh, and the state of health and state of charge of the battery but also uh, uh, provides all of the sort of uh, uh, motorbike functions um, from a from a normal uh, motorbike ECU okay so just for the for the viewers at home because that a lot of motorcyclists will be petrol motorcyclists already. Could you sort of explain to us what these different sort of parts and elements that we can see in front of us are? Sure, That's absolutely. Okay. I mean, uh, I think you can see a fairly traditional looking sort of bike frame. Yep. Um, and I think that's an important element because what we've done uh, working together with Triumph um, and also Integral Powertrain, uh, the, the sort of motor uh, supplier, um, is really try and integrate an electrified powertrain into um, a, a, a normal looking bike as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, the key point there is to I include all of the, the, the systems that are required on, a, on an electric bike um, and package them in a way that uh, makes uh, and maintains centre of gravity as much as possible to a normal traditional bike mm -hmm. um, and uh, ensures that uh, the mass is at the right place as well so, uh, and, and, is, and is relatively uh, low for an electrified um, uh, system. Yep. So you, you can see that the, the black carbon uh, sort of uh, um, uh, bits around here are effectively the, the, the battery um, with, the, with the casing as well here mm -hmm. um, and then obviously we've got the, the motor uh, at the bottom uh, okay. as well. Um, really to try and sort of make it uh, eventually look like a, a, as close as possible to a, a normal sort of production bike. Okay, so you can almost, if, if this was a, an internal combustion engine bike, we'd have the airbox up here and then we would have the engine and gearbox down here and it does sort of follow the shape and the line of that. A absolutely, and that's been one of the really um, big uh, opportunities that we've had uh, is to take our sort of existing sort of technology and capability in uh, sort of uh, real class leading battery uh, module mm -hmm. uh, um, technology uh, into uh, this, this frame and working closely with, with Triumph. So in terms of um, electric bikes, you did just touch on the overall weight of them. One of the common factors in electric motorcycles is their weight. Battery technology is very heavy. You've obviously worked for a very long time at the pinnacle of electric powered motorsport effectively. Um, how is that going to trickle down and how much, how are you going to break the mould and what sort of gains are we going to be able to see from the TE1 production bike when it eventually goes into production? Sure, I mean, I, I, I think you, you touched on it there. We, we've, we've had the opportunity to, to work on electrified propulsion systems for over 10 years now mm -hmm. uh, and we've been able to glean various uh, uh, sort of uh, background knowledge throughout those years. Um, this actually introduces uh, a sort of our next generation module technology uh, into a product. Um, so we are taking the best of our sort of experience um, and all the research and development that we've done mm -hmm. to try and maximise the benefits with regards to performance, with regards to range and uh, as you say uh, reducing mass as much as possible. Mm. Um, it, what the, the, the benchmarking work that we have done, um, certainly from, a, from an overall powertrain uh, mass perspective, it is going to be class leading. Um, we, 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 we do believe that it will uh, push the boundaries with regards to 
to, to mass. Um, and importantly, uh, what that means for the rider. Um, so I think if we can do that, you actually have benefits in, in range and mm. in performance. Um, but also, it's been a, we, we have been able to sort of position the, 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 the battery uh, in the frame to make sure that you'll get on, the, on, the, on a bike, on this bike, and hopefully it will feel, mm -hmm. you know, from a handling perspective, like an, a, a, an internal combustion engine um, would, would feel. But all of the benefits that you get from an electric powertrain. Yeah, I mean, that is one thing when I've, I've ridden pretty much every electric bike on the, on the market, and you do always get on them and they do always feel like an electric bike on the, you know, as soon as you take them off the stand. That is one thing that is always immediately clear to me. Um, that, I mean, I've got to touch on it. The three things that every single petrol powered motorcyclist points to when we say what's preventing you from moving over to the, the electric realm. And these are three things that I'm sure have been in the, the crosshairs of Williams Advanced Engineering for a long time anyway, is uh, the price range and recharge time. Um, what are you going to do to persuade more petrol-powered motorcyclists to switch to electric with the, the, the technology that you're putting into the TU1? Sure. So um, we've taken an approach together with Triumph in identifying a specification that we wanted for, for, the, for the bike and the powertrain, um, which has led us to utilise next generation module technology. Mm -hmm. um, the, the battery system that we've sort of developed allows us to have quite a high performance um, sort of cell to be utilised. And what that actually allows is a, a, a couple of things. Um, what it allows is the ability to ride faster mm -hmm. for longer, which is a really important point. We don't want to see drop off in performance. Mm -hmm. And the thermal system is actually being developed as well to make sure that that happens. Okay. So you don't get drop off, you get batteries too hot, they will drop off in performance. We've really worked hard to make sure that that uh, doesn't happen. Um, uh, additionally, with that, it allows a faster charge. So um, utilising that sort of uh, cell technology allows the charge to be faster. Ah. So we, you know, there will be um, uh, uh, charge times of less than 20 minutes um, for, or for the bike with the appropriate charger. Okay. Um, we have been pushing uh, fast charge technology uh, on a number of different programmes uh, that we've worked in, in automotive and non-automotive applications. And it's been utilising that technology that, uh, and, and the best of that technology into this product. So that, the, when you, the number you just mentioned there obviously is a, it's a very early, early expectation of what the bike will be able to do. But that does put the, this bike, if it does have that, firmly in the realms of pulling up at a petrol station, going for a pee, grabbing a coffee and a pasty, and sitting down five minutes and eating that in line with refilling your petrol bike and doing exactly the same thing. A absolutely. So, the, the, you know, we'll be able to achieve 120 miles with the, you know, that's the target figure uh, mm -hmm. for, for the bike as Which well. Which again, if we could jump in, that is kind of sports bike territory. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, you, you do your 100 miles, 120 miles, um, you stop off for a cup of coffee and, and, a, and a bacon butty, mm -hmm. you know, you put the bike on charge. By the time you're finished, you can then go off and do another 120 miles, which I think is, is really great. Yeah, that's probably more than most sports bike riders do on a weekend anyway. But uh, dear, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for talking to us today. And uh, stay tuned because there's going to be more to come on this bike very soon.